Bison Basketball Show with NDSU head coaches Dave Richmond and Jory Collins. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. And welcome into the Bison Basketball Show, your home for all things NDSU hoops as we head towards the end of the month of January in Summit League play and business surely picking up on the hardwood. There's no question about that. My name is Jeff Colhane and here with the head coach of the NDSU men, David Richmond. Coach, it's always a pleasure rolling towards the end of this first month of conference play. Coronavirus has made a little bumpy with some rescheduling and some things moving around, but we're getting the games in as we can. Your thoughts on your basketball team currently as we speak? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly been an interesting year, Jeff, and we, we've talked about it all the time to, to our group and to our, as a staff. It's really hard to judge a book by its cover. I um, mean, in, in COVID, I thought last year was going to be an interesting year, Jeff, yeah. but, but this year in particular, uh, has put in some challenges to it, too. But those, are, those challenges also can become excuses if you let them. Um, I've been pleased, especially with last weekend's road trip, that we didn't let those circumstances or those excuses come into play. And we got some terrific results. And now it's about us continuing to build from there. All right, let's roll those highlights on last weekend for the Bison. And things were moved around with the schedule, certainly, as well. Supposed to start Thursday at Denver. That got moved to a Monday. So the Bison hit the road down I-29 to take on the Omaha Mavericks on Saturday, January the 8th at Baxter Arena. Coach, that week leading up was not routine by any means at all, and your guys were able to come together and play this game on a Saturday afternoon with not a ton of prep or not a ton of preparation overall and able to find a way and get the job done. Kind of walk us through that whole setup there. Jeff, I don't know if I'll ever be a part of anything anything like that before, and, and having different trans different forms of transportations for different groups based on um, COVID isolations and quarantines. Um, guys touching the basketball for a first time in a few days and then rallying as a group. And um, that was a terrific win uh, under the circumstances. And, and our guys, again, refused to make excuses. Um, it wasn't pretty at times. Uh, Ten turnovers, I, I believe, in both halves, 20 for the game. Uh, that's not bison basketball. But, you know, the execution that we had, the toughness that we had, in particular down the stretch, um, you see that you saw that three from Tyree. He had another big one. Um, that, that is a great Bison basketball, 1-14, 14-1 to, 14, 14 to, um, 14 to 1 victory for us and extremely pleased with the guys. See the game recap right there from Gate City Bank. A season high 25 points from Rocky Cruiser. And down the stretch in that game, Coach, a four-point win. As he got rolling, it felt like your guys maybe got a little bit more in rhythm, specifically on the offensive end where you made five of your last seven threes in that contest. And, and again, Jeff, the circumstances behind that, you know, for us to, to come together as a group the way we did, really literally Saturday morning, um, you, you knew it was going to take a, a minute for us to find the rhythm and routine. And um, finally, we, we did find a little bit of routine to that game, rhythm to that game. And, and fortunately, it was at the right time and just enough time to hang on. Yeah, no matter how you get them, wins on the road in the league play, Play, you'll take him in any way, shape, or form. And the Bison started that past weekend with a 71-67 victory at Omaha for a win on the road in Summit League play. All right, you hit the, uh, you know, get on the plane and you head out west to the Rocky Mountains to take on a Denver team for a Monday night tilt, rescheduled from the previous Thursday. And you see the score right there, Coach. You blink, and it's 10-0 Bison. A great start for your basketball team that Monday night. Well, I think that was on you. You finally <laughs> you, you finally joined us, and then we rallied, too. And there was something different about our guys, Jeff, pregame. They were extremely locked in, focused. And you could see that. You could see it in the score. You could see it in their mentality. Um, and, and just as complete of half as we've played, uh, you know, all year. Um, and to do it on the road, to do it against a Denver team that I think is continuing to make some strides. They had played a really good game two nights before against the University of North Dakota. Um, and just a, a please, I, I thought we were great defensively, locked in, we made shots, we were urgent with everything. Um, and to go on the road and get a victory like that and really control it like that and, and never being down in the, into the second half, I'm extremely pleased with it. And, and you're seeing a shot right there by, uh, and I didn't talk about it in the Omaha game, but Malik Carden-Hayes just had a really a, a terrific weekend. For the most part, we know what we're going to get from the quote-unquote big three and Rocky, Sam, and Tyree. Um, but we, we elevated our play over that weekend because of Malik and Bowden and some of those guys continuing to elevate their play. Big block right there by Rocky. is. We'll talk a lot more about him, I sure 
sure, but I mean, he took advantage of some mismatches. Bowden Scunberg, I asked you in the post game, is there anyone having more fun playing basketball right now than the Jamestown native? And you can see it right there. Big smile on his face and another move here by Rocky, taking advantage of some uh, some opportunities on the offensive end that night. Yeah, I mean, it was good to see Rocky get back to form and round into form, but to, to go back to Bowden, Jeff, you know, just that's the way the game's supposed to be played with a bunch of joy. I mean, Bowden's got a terrific competitive spirit like we've talked about countless times. It's infectious to our guys. You can see the bench there. Um, and and it, it really was. It was a lot of fun to go on the road. We, we've always, no matter how Denver is, no matter how, how we are, we've always struggled at there based on the maybe the altitude or just the environment or some things like that. And so that, that was a really a terrific win. And, and to get two on the road felt, felt really good. Yeah, you take a look at the game recap brought to you by Gate City Bank. It's the largest margin of victory for the Bison versus a Division One team this season. Season and the largest margin of victory in Summit League play. You'd have to go back to the season prior. It was against the Denver Pioneers, winning at home in that Saturday night game last season, 84 to 58. You see some of the numbers. Rocky Cruiser capping off a great weekend on the road, 24 points, nine rebounds. Now let's talk about Malik Harden Hayes. You brought him up briefly, double double, first career double double versus Omaha, and you saw what he did in that game on Monday night, a season high 15 points. Obviously, some injuries to your front line. Brent Nelson goes goes down against Omaha and Malik he just fills right in and makes it happen. Yeah, he just couldn't be happier for a guy like Malik where you know you're going back to when he walked into this program um, there was an energy, a joy, a spirit about him. And, and to, to defend Malik there has been some injuries and, and some other circumstances that have kind of held him back and um, you know, he's, he's gotten healthy. Um, he's continued to get back in the lab, as the guys talk about, and work. And just really pleased for him to see that. He, his length and athleticism provides a spark. Um, you know, he obviously had a huge dunk against Western, nine, uh, nine rebounds in the first half against Omaha. Just very pleased for that young man, and obviously a big part of our success is, uh, over that weekend. I've got a feeling we're going to see that highlight from Malik Harden Hayes, that dunk against Western Illinois we'll all be talking about for a long, long time. Hey, coming up next on the Bison Basketball Show, the matchup with Western Illinois at home, and we'll also talk with Coach, get an update on some of his injuries to the front line. And as we talk about this, uh, this setup here, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's a big holiday around the country and around the world. It means a lot to David Richmond and his Bison basketball team as well, as well. That's on the way. Stay with us. Better starts with convenience. Our 43 convenient locations make running errands easy. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing time which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. This means better ways to brighten your day. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Oh, Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tile Ice. Yet. Bud Light Salsa Retro Tata, the loudest flavors ever. Salsa Retro Tile Ice. Have you tried these yet? Bud Light Salsa Retro Tile, the loudest flavors ever. 
And welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. We're going to take a look at the Western Illinois highlights coming up in a moment. But as we speak right now, Coach Martin Luther King Jr. Day, an important day to so many around our country and around the world. And I know it's very important to you and your team as well. Yeah, I think important is really an understatement, Jeff. And, and I'm guilty. I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm guilty of not really realizing the significance and magnitude of this day. Um, and it's really hit me based on the circumstances of everything that's happened in our country the last couple of years. And um, the character, uh, the leadership, the, the fortitude of, of Mr. Mister, and, and I say that loud and clear, Mr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, his leadership was really um, cutting edge and, and something that needs to be uh, heard more and more, and, and I'm just so happy that we can celebrate this day. And, and I, again, and all of us, hopefully we, we realize the impact of this day and, and the gentleman that we honor on this day. Yeah, well said. Can't talk about it enough. There's no question about that. Saturday this past weekend, a home matchup in Summit League play against a Western Illinois team. We've talked about them, Coach. They're not your uncle or your mother's Western Illinois bunch. Uh, Rob Jeter's done a nice job. He's added some really solid pieces in the offseason. And uh, they got to a great start on us. Your guys fought back very, very well to take it to overtime. Uh, it was a battle for 45 minutes this past weekend. Yeah, credit credit Rob and, and, their, and their staff. They've done a tremendous job. But uh, just um, a disappointing effort, Jeff. Um, I did not love our – I'm a culture guy. Um, there's certainly some basketball adjustments uh, that we need to get better at. And, uh, make no more question about it. But we didn't have the right mindset. And, and, and you've seen that with Bison basketball in, in some of our home games in particular where – uh, we're, the, there is a tale of two different halves, and, and this is a group that's talented, experienced, tough, in a lot of ways poised that we know we can come back. But when you're playing, to your point, these upper echelon teams in the Summit League, and make no mistake, Western is one of those teams, your margin for error, your room to come back is, is slimmer and slimmer, and, and we need to have a better mindset out of the gates against, uh, against all of our opponents and, and, and work to become a better version of us, Jeff, not be so focused on our opponents. Jarius Cook, you're seeing some of the big shots hitting from the outside there, knocked down three triples in the game, and Western led by as many as 18 in this contest and kind of had a, a similar feel to your point, Coach, to SDSU back on December 30th and um, Rocky with the bucket and the foul. You see some of the energy there. Look at this dunk. Hello, Malik Harden Hayes, Coach, the Skywalker right there. That reminds me of a young Jeff Culhane oh boy. Uh, back in the day. Um, you know, again, um, like I said, there were certainly some good things, Jeff, and, and I don't want to excuse those, some things that we can build on. Um, but but you're, t you're seeing a lot of energy and joy and, and spirit right here, and, and all these are coming in the second half. And, and, and Bison basketball is a 40-minute is deal, and we've got to be able to find that from the start. And to give up 48, 48 points uh, in the first half is really inexcusable. Um, again, the, we, we have a lot of toughness and fight and resiliency to, in, in our, within our group, uh, but, but we, we can't rely on those things, Jeff. We, we've got to be that version of us from start to finish. Gate City Bank game recap right there. The final in overtime, Western Illinois, the winner, Rocky Cruiser, with 14 second-half points. Tyree and Jerry has got it going, and Sam Greasel as well with 14 points and eight rebounds. Now the Bison turn their attention this weekend. Two big games on the road, and as it's scheduled now, you got four big ones on the road coming up where Kansas City and Oral Roberts this weekend, USD and SDSU next weekend as it is scheduled today. I know those are big. Before we talk about those, let's get your thoughts. Uh, injury update, Grant Nelson, Andrew Morgan. Looks scary, I know, in Omaha, but I think yeah. we got some better news on Grant uh, just uh, previously. Yeah, I mean, if you can have some positive news coming out of injuries, we've really had last week was a positive week from you know, the news we got on Grant and, and the news that we even got on, on Andrew, too, where both of those two young men, um, you know, I would, I would you know, say at this point, point they're weeks away rather than months or um, but the fact that there is an opportunity for them to get back sooner than later is certainly encouraging for us. Yep. All right. This weekend it is at Kansas City at Oral Roberts. Coach, quick thoughts before we uh, say goodbye. On this. We got we got opportunities before those games to get better, and that's got to be our focus. We got to find that mindset of not worrying about our opponents, uh, not worrying about how our opponents are guarding us, not worrying about where we're playing, and just becoming that better version of ourselves. If we do that, I like it. If we don't, we're going to become extinct like the dinosaurs did. Yep. Coach, thanks so much. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you, Jeff. There you go. So head coach David Richmond coming up. The NDS. You women battling, fighting, short-handed in the backcourt right now. Jory Collins joins us on the other side on the Bison Basketball Show. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers, better with Pepsi.
Catch all the NDSU Bison action with Bison Media Zone at inform.game slash BMZ. From live game coverage to post-game shows, podcasts, live chats, video blogs, daily articles, and more, Bison Media Zone is your number one source for all things Bison. Follow the herd and join Bison Media Zone at inforum.game slash BMZ to catch your Bison sports news today and every day. WDAY is your home for North Dakota high school tournament memories on DVD. Watch these student athletes at their best as they put it all on the line for their school and communities. Visit WDAY.com and click on the WDAY Deals tab. Every game is available for $25 plus tax, shipping, and handling. All the games you remember only at WDAY.com. Buy your North Dakota high school championship DVDs today. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. Hey, welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Now joined by NDSU women's head coach Jory Collins. Coach, great to see you as always once again. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, scheduling-wise, you guys so far, knock on wood, been able to roll oh, through it. I probably shouldn't have brought it up, but I just <laughs> did. But been able to knock out the games as they have been played thus far. A couple of weekends ago, two home games, and then just off of the road this past weekend. Your basketball team right now face some challenges with injuries, some illnesses, and uh, fighting a little shorthanded. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been up and down. Just just knowing who's available and who's not going to be available. We had that ever since we came back from Christmas. Uh, makes it a little bit tough, you know, finding some consistency and and having people having to change roles, maybe game to game and and week to week. Uh, but we're not the only ones facing those things. So those really aren't excuses. It's it's next man up. Uh, and, and fit in and, and try to do what you can to help us win some games. Um, we have some players that are starting to come on pretty well. We have some other players that we need to get going. Um, once we find that groove, we'll have a chance to, to get in a rhythm here. Yep. Well, a couple of weekends ago, the Bison women at home with Denver and Omaha at the Shield Center inside the Sanford Health Athletic Complex. And you see the highlights here from the Denver game. Coach, this was a battle. This was a, a hard-fought game. And uh, your women were able to prevail in the end as you see some of the outside shots going down. Kind of walk me through this game, the first thing that comes to mind right away about your performance. Well, yeah, anybody that listened to me after knew I wasn't particularly pleased with this game. I thought we missed an opportunity to really uh, get ourselves going after a tough road trip at the at the South Dakota schools. A chance to get back home and kind of get our footing and play well. This was one of those games where we probably made just enough plays to win the game. Um, we're able to knock down some shots late. I think Ryan Cobbins uh, you know, only scored four field goals, but they were all threes at some big points. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up getting a better second half out of Emily Dietz here, just making some plays. But um, it was a struggle. They have a really good player at the four. They got 31 on us. That's kind of been our the last couple games. We've had some individuals just have career nights on us and made it really difficult for us. And, and Uju Azuedos was really good in this game. Uh, we're able to have Rania here make some plays too late uh, but it was just one of those where we had to squeak it out and and, and we, I got to give our team some credit we played with some toughness down the stretch and made plays when we needed to just would have loved to have seen a little bit more consistency uh -huh. um, you know Emily Dietz went over a thousand points in that game has had a great career so far and uh, wanting her to finish on a high note really badly Gate City Bank game recap 74 68 winner you made the plays late we saw a big bucket there at the end as well on the free throw highlight, you could hear Dom Izzo calling it out. There it is on the 1,000 career points for Emily Dietz. And Rania Hopkins, I know unable to go this last weekend on the road, but she was big. I'm playing her great all-around game. For that you. was probably her best all-around game as far as she scored when she needed to score. She distributed when she needed to distribute. A lot of good decisions in that game. Um, would have been really excited for her to be able to continue to do that, uh, you know, the three games after. But uh, the way things are going, things out of your control right now are making that difficult. Well, Saturday then uh, in the afternoon, you move on another home matchup with Omaha coming to town. And I, I know this one's going to frustrate you a little bit. This was, was not your team's best effort, not your expectation of what their capabilities are. Yeah, it just, you know, the first quarter um, got away from us. Uh, and that hasn't happened to us uh, really all year long as far as just 
you know, coming out and we really just laid an egg in the from about seven minutes to two minutes in the first quarter and got down, I believe, 14 in the first. Um, got all the way down by 20, I believe, before we, you know, made a good effort to get it within single digits and late in the game. But quite honestly, this was a game I don't know that we were in, uh, you know, after the first quarter. And, and for our team and, and, and wanting to play well at home, and do some things in this league, this performance is probably unacceptable for what we're trying to be. Well, a lot of things from this Omaha bunch. This is a team with a lot of pieces back from a season ago. They did add some newcomers, obviously. But this was a squad that made it to the Summit League Tournament Championship game as the eighth seed, surprised some people, trying to carry over some momentum. So uh, it's a squad that is, is certainly yeah, capable. Know, Coach Banks has done a great job, especially defensively for them. They've, they stay in a lot of games because they're really connected on the defensive end and make it tough to score. But this was another game where they had a freshman guard get 25 on us. And that's probably unacceptable if we think that we are who we want to be. Right. So, uh, you know, Heaven started coming on. She played great in that game. We got to get, as we've said all year, we got to get the second and third guy offensively uh, for us to be any good. Brian Cobbins, 12 points. You saw a three-pointer at the end. Gate City Bank game recap. But as Coach mentioned, it's certainly not uh, the outcome that he or his team was hoping for, searching for, specifically at home in Summit League play, falling by the final score of 68 to 54. The Bison women then hit the road this past weekend. Games at St. Thomas and at Western Illinois. We'll take a look at those, some of the game highlights when we come back on the Bison Basketball Show. Oh, Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tide. <laughs> Have you tried these yet? Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tide. The loudest flavors ever. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers. Better with Pepsi. Better starts with convenience. Our 43 convenient locations make running errands easy. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing day. Which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. And this means better ways to brighten your day. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. Oh, Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tide Ice. <laughs> Have you tried these yet? Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tide The loudest flavors ever. And welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Life on the road and semi league play never easy in the NDSU women on the road this past weekend in St. Paul and in Macomb. First one taking on the Tommies from St. Thomas. Coach, is it is it difficult to scout this group never playing them before? It's their first year in the league, D3 to D1. I think everybody has some questions about how good both of these St. Thomas teams are on the men's and the women's side. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that. I, th I thought we had them pegged pretty good in our scout, and, and they didn't do anything we didn't anticipate. Uh, you know, I'm a small school guy. That's where I came from, D2. It, it doesn't matter. If you can play, you can play, and if you can coach, you can coach. And um, you know, Coach Sin does a great job with their group. They're really connected on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, this particular game, we lost Rania in warm-ups to, to getting sick, and, and all of a sudden we had three scholarship subs and no and only one guard. And, uh, you know, we had to have some people play a whole bunch of minutes with very little rest. Kind of affected us on the defensive end. Um, but that was another performance where we just really struggled to score the ball. Uh, and they had one player, you know, go off and get 34. The Norling kid 
was really, really good for them. We didn't really have an answer for her. Um, and, and that's been, you know, kind of the theme the last couple games. I thought we had some players step up. This was really the first time we started uh, uh, Olivia Skibble. Uh, she played really good this weekend and, and kind of a coming out party for her as far as just getting an opportunity to play extended minutes and make plays for us. Uh, so that was one of the positives in this game. But uh, there was two different times in this game where we made, you know, 10 point comebacks. We were down 11 at half, came out and tied the game. We got down 10 again, came back and tied it at 56. Mm -hmm. Played with some guts and some toughness late, but just really couldn't get the stops we needed in the last couple minutes. Yeah, let's talk about Olivia, our Gate City Bank game recap. We'll talk about her from the Western game as well. She was very good there. How happy are you for her that she was asked, called upon? You mentioned it, next man up mentality. Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm happy for her and proud of her. She's somebody that shows up every day, does the right things every day. Uh, she understands the culture we're trying to build here and lives it. Uh, and so for her to be able to get the opportunity to play and then play well and produce for us, uh, I think is a great thing, a great sign for things yeah. to come for her. 73-62 final, the Bison then hit the road and to McComb to Western Hall to take on the Leathernecks. Always a tough place to play. Coach J J.D. Gravina does a great job with that Leatherneck program, but I would imagine there was some urgency from you and from your group getting back on the winning track after a couple of losses. Yeah, it was just a game we had to have it. Um, you know, it was, it was kind of a breaking point for us. We're either going to get this thing, uh, give ourselves a chance to get it turned around, or we're going to go the other way. And I thought in this particular game, this was maybe the most unselfish game uh, that we played on the offensive end. Uh, had several people step up and make plays. Obviously, you can see Heaven's numbers and how good those were with 25 points, but we had uh, Sophie Olsen come in in the first half and, and make two threes and a pull-up jumper to give us a little lift there. Uh, Katie Hildebrandt, this was the first week and she's got a chance to be back playing in five weeks with a rolled ankle. Um, you know, and that's really the depth of our bench there with Emily Binky on the back. And so yeah. uh, Rachel Novak as a walk-on played extended minutes in this game and, and gave us a great defensive effort. So. The thing about playing those young kids was, you know, there wasn't any selfishness there. They were just moving the ball. That gave some people opportunities. The ball got to come back to heaven in this game quite a bit, uh, and she made the most of it. You know, I hate it, and I love it. You know, heaven had to play 40 minutes in both games this past weekend, so super tough performance by her, but I'd rather not run her into the ground and have to do that. We need to get some of our kids back so we can give her a break. But uh, that was a big play right there by Olivia. She'd gone one for seven from three, uh, had the guts to step into that corner one and take the next one, and uh, that was kind of a, a nail in the coffin for us. Gate City Bank game recap. A big win on the road needed by Jory Collins and the NDSU women, 63-55. Coach, best of luck this week. Thanks so much for the time today. All right, thanks, Jeff. There you go. That's going to do it for us. Thanks to Jory Collins and David Richmond. My name is Jeff Colhane. Thank you for watching the Bison Basketball Show. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. This has been an exclusive presentation.